about to embark on this this tour, this expedition that we called Walking Bauhaus. You'll all kind of create this walk together and under the brilliant guidance, of course, of our good friend Sean. You all know him from his Toronto Star column and his books, I hope. And then, yeah, Sean and I sat together and wanted to do something meaningful and engaging around Bauhaus 100. There's, there's very few direct connections between yeah. the Bauhaus and Toronto. We'll, we'll stumble across a couple of them, but most of them are indirect like influences of influences, uh, because the Bauhaus was so influential that its kind of echo uh, appears all over Toronto. So starting here at uh, Roy Thompson Hall might be like an odd spot for the Bauhaus, uh, but when uh, the Bauhaus started in 1919 in the city of Weimar, it was sponsored by the city of Weimar. They wanted to, uh, the, the, to have the arts uh, and culture in their city, so they sponsored it. Uh, when Roy Thompson Hall was built, uh, it was a group of uh, citizens that got together to kind of spur it on, and it's still owned sort of quasi by the city of Toronto. And, and the Bauhaus, so it's, all, it's known for architecture, it was a mixing of all kinds of uh, arts, uh, arts and crafts, uh, uh, and they had a lot of theater people uh, teaching architects how to build and that sort of thing. So there was a real mixing of the trades. Um, Walter Gropius, the guy who started the Bauhaus, saw the um, saw, saw a real kind of class divide between you know the architect as the creator and uh, the craftsperson who was a little more lower, and he wanted to bring everyone up to the same playing field. The Bauhaus had come at the tail end of World War One, when there was an incredible amount of uh, destruction and, and death. Uh, and the war was really fought over these kind of ancient or semi-ancient uh, nationalistic religious symbols, right? So there was a real rejection of uh, religious and, and overt nationalistic uh, uh, kind of uh, iconography, uh, which is why the, the, what's thought of as the Bauhaus look is very clean and austere, uh, and the things that influence are very clean and austere. So here's a quote from his, the opening of his manifesto. So let us therefore create a new guild of craftsmen, free of the divisive class pretentious pretensions that endeavor to raise a prideful barrier between craftsmen and artists. The word uh, Bauhaus is, is house of work, but it was known sort of as um, school of building. Uh, but again, a very kind of practical hands-on, but at the same time, very utopian uh, idea of how to train artists. Uh, there is also an ethos of transparency. Um, of being able to see uh, what was going on and being honest about uh, the buildings that were being built, not trying to hide anything. Uh, I, like, I like Roy Thompson Hall in this respect because when it's, when it's lit up at night, you can see inside of it, you can see the staircases. I wanted to meet at the middle um, Freedom Arch because at the base of it, on this side, there's a chunk of the Berlin Wall. Uh, which was moved here and there's a nice little plaque. It's very subtle. It, it, it's a number of modernist things, but it's also a, a good example of expressionism. The building itself um, is really interesting. Finnish architect uh, Viljo Ravel, of course, did it. Uh, didn't live to see it uh, built uh, after winning the international competition. Designed this with a bit of a metaphor in mind of the Finnish idea of democracy was an eyeball and the eyelids uh, were the uh, two buildings around it. Uh, the building itself, uh, I think, embodies a bit of Bauhausness. There was a separation of uses. Uh, it's kind of same as City Hall. You have the staff area, you have the political area, and you have the public area that kind of all hang out together. So this thing must have felt like a spaceship landing, right? And it went through, but the, the kind of flashpoint was this Henry Moore sculpture. But it's an abstract sculpture, so I thought that was a connection to uh, Gropius's monument to the victims of the March Push which was a, a thing he designed between 1920 and 1922, but it was very controversial because it was a very political um, uh, sculpture because it was, uh, it, it was kind of nudging against the government. That abstraction of not making something uh, uh, figurative, of, of absolutely representative of something, it allowed people to interpret things the way they wanted to, which was a bit of a, a Bauhaus ideal, and you kind of see that with the Henry Moore archer. People, People kind of glom onto it in different ways. Uh, if you can see the archer, uh, you can see it, but if you can't, it's, it means something else to you. You'll see it. So Cloud Gardens is behind me. When we came up with the idea for this walk, uh, this spot was immediately one of the places I thought of. It was from 1993, designed by uh, Baird Sampson Architects and Margaret Priest, artist, Margaret Priest. So connecting artist and uh, architect together. Gropius wanted to 
uh, value uh, craftspeople. Uh, and the architect, the sort of the author, the the art, the genius kind of creator often gets the uh, accolades, and he wanted to kind of bring it back level. And it, the people that actually built it, the people that hammered stuff and fitted stuff, uh, are not memorialized. And this is their memorial. So you see that kind of patchwork uh, quilt. Um, that is that that was a uh, a collaboration with um, a couple dozen. Um, trade organizations and patchwork quilt is a celebration of the people that actually build the um, that built the city. This is our most direct uh, connection, maybe our only direct direct connection to the Bauhaus, uh, because this is one of Mies van der Rohe's final projects uh, before he died. Uh, 1967 it opened. It just had his 50th anniversary two years ago. Uh, Mies van der Rohe was the third and final. Uh, director of the Bauhaus, and uh, he was the one that voluntarily shut it down in 1933 as the Nazis were creeping in and didn't like this progressive uh, avant-garde thing uh, existing at, by that point in Berlin itself. Uh, so he shut it down, uh, left Germany, fled, uh, and eventually found himself in America and arguably became the most famous uh, uh, product or, or thing, that person to come out of the Bauhaus. Uh, but uh, but it's a it's a, a fine example of the international style of of uh, a building that could exist anywhere that didn't exhibit any international or na nationalistic. Uh, uh, sim symbolism or iconography uh, and again it was a way uh, to to get past the the thing the, 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 the reasons why we had war this is my one of my favorite places in Toronto uh, again one of his last projects we're very lucky to have it the Bauhaus like after it was shut down in 33 one of the ways it disseminated its ideas was through exhibitions so there were, there were Bauhaus exhibitions of these ideas that went around the world. One of the places that hosted it was the Harvard School of Design. And ultimately, a few uh, of the Bauhaus people, Gropius himself, uh, Marcel Brewer, ended up teaching at the Harvard School. Uh, and the Harvard School produced all kinds of, again, star, star, star architects like Philip Johnson, uh, one being I.M. Pei. This is this is Berksy Park. Nice about this place is uh, in the, the, the redoing of the park uh, by Claude Cormier. Uh, they uh, they blended a lot of things together. Uh, is this a piece of art or is it design? Uh, that is what artists and designers and people who write about this sort of thing uh, would debate. Um, it's kind of a blending of the two. But uh, but again, it kind of feels very Bauhausian to blend those two things: art and design. Uh, in, in the same, kind of brought up to the same level. Um, but if you look at the, the, the ground here, it's uh, a very subtle differentiation, differentiation of color. Um, and the colors were made to match some of the older brickwork in Toronto. But if you go to the Bauhaus building, the original school, uh, there's very subtle color codes. Some of the structural elements are colored in particular ways, and floors that do different things are colored in different ways, which is a bit like this uh, uh, colorful floor. And they had uh, foundation courses, and Paul Klee and uh, Kadinsky were teachers, and they taught the first year students of the Bauhaus um, uh, color theory. Um, which is a which is a bit of a I think lost art I think among architects and and, and designers at least in Toronto and in North America. Thanks for uh, thanks for like spending a Friday night on a beautiful day uh, talking about uh, a hundred year old architecture school in Berlin. Yeah.